hear a lot of me. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. Um, we are uh, in the second to last talk, God willing, of this blessed book, The Song of Songs. Um, God willing, today we'll start from chapter 6 and conclude in the middle of, of chapter 7. And then, God willing, next time, um, which probably will be before Saturday, so we'll, we'll just upload the lecture. We'll continue from chapter 7 uh, till the end. So as we've been studying this book, um, <clears throat> it's the relationship that each one of us has and the church has as the bride of Christ with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so after we fall in love with him and he begins to reveal a little bit of himself to us, um, we start making the commitment, we search for him, um, and uh, the relationship is building and we are uniting with him step by step. <clears throat> And uh, if you remember last chapter, the visit got messed up. We, we messed up our visit with Christ. He comes at our door. He knocks. We get too lazy. We come to our senses, arise from the bed, go to the door, and he did, he's not there. Um, so this chapter we see she, um, she begins to uh, change in the good way by his grace. And um, then she praises him, and more importantly, as we'll see in this chapter and the next, he starts to praise her <clears throat> uh, with, with the same words as, as what she praised him with. So um, th this section we consider um, the, the transformation and the praise of, of the bride. Um, and um, actually, the groom praises the bride about three times in the book. One was in chapter four, and as we said, the, the fathers contemplate this is after she's transformed by his grace in, in the waters of baptism. Um, he, he begins to describe how beautiful she is. And then after the Eucharist, which was the last chapter of the wedding banquet or the, the, um, the supper of the lamb, right? Um, she's also transformed by his grace. And in the next chapter, we'll see... Um, this happens also after we begin to tell others about how beautiful our groom is. <clears throat> so, um, as you see, when we work to preach his name and the whole world and to show others how beautiful he is and how beautiful he made us to be, um, we become witnesses to him. Uh, and, we, and we tell them, taste and see that the Lord is good, just like the Samaritan woman did. So interesting enough, when we tell others how beautiful God is, he makes us even more beautiful. Um, and that's what we see in chapter 7. <clears throat> he describes her for the, for the third time. So we'll try to go a little more quickly through the symbolism here because a lot of it was already explained. Um, and that's why uh, we'll be on track, God willing. So <clears throat> the first verse in the sixth chapter, where has your beloved gone? So um, the unbelievers, in a sense, begin to question her about the quality of the groom and the depth of the relationship and the knowledge of the bride. Where has your beloved gone, O fairest among what? You're, you're so beautiful. Where is your groom? Where has your beloved turned aside that we may seek him with you? So they also want to be wed to him. They're intrigued and they ask her where he has gone. And they realized that he had, again, he had made her as beautiful as well. <clears throat> Before she was dark. Now she is lovely. Okay, um, <clears throat> And how did she know where he is? Because she searched for him too. And she realized um, who he is like and where to find Christ. Okay? Um, so then she says, my beloved has gone to his garden. Not to her garden, but it's the same thing to the beds of spices, to feed his flock in the gardens, we already explained this, and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He feeds his flock among the lilies. Um, God is always with us, right? And that's why she said, I am his, and he is mine. Um, <clears throat> and he never left her, even though she, she appeared in the last chapter, in chapter 5, that he was gone. God is always with us. He says, I am always with you, even to the end of the age. This is what he said right before what he ascended to heaven. They, they were going to see him, his face no more. But he said, don't worry, I'm with you always. Um, and he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
And because we love him, we have confidence even though we don't see him and with the eyes of the flesh. We see him with the eyes of God. Um, and now she doesn't say this as much with emotion, but with faith. So this is the, the deeper love, not the, uh, the emotional, you know, um, crush that, that the immature person has for someone, but this is the deep love that the, the marital uh, husband and wife have, have together. Um, <clears throat> so these are like the ones who have been, you know, the sweethearts, the ones who have the deep love, but it's after 50 years of marriage, for example, compared to the ones who are just five, <laughs> five days, you know, uh, just enjoying themselves, not enjoying the other person. Um, that's not the, the real love. Um, <clears throat> And why? We love him because he first loved, loved us. So this is the leading and feeding, as, as some of um, the commentators say. He is constantly not leaving us alone and constantly feeding us. Um, and so in the next uh, few verses, <clears throat> he starts to explain how beautiful she is. He says, oh, my love, you are as beautiful as Terza, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. Of course, here it's the spiritual explanation. No one is going to take, tell their bride, you're like an army. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's, that's not a praise um, it, uh, unless we take it spiritually. Um, Turn your eyes away from me, for they have overcome me with love. Um, and so Terza here, it means the light. Um, and this was a city of where the, the king, King Solomon, for example, used to have his you know, summer house or residential uh, palace or the city, uh, also similar to Jerusalem, the, play, the city of the king. Um, <clears throat> and so he's saying, you are where I choose to live and to enjoy myself. Um, <clears throat> so uh, St. Ambrose says, the more one strives for the Lord, the more God exalts him um, because that person ex or her, because that person is exalting God. Right? On this account, the psalmist also says, I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up, which is pray in the first hour. Like For the holy person lifts up God or praises God, but their sinner puts him down. Therefore, he wishes that she should turn her eyes away. So um, also here we see she, he says that she is like an army with banners. What does that mean? Um, in during wartime, you need weapons. During the victory, after the war, you need banners to proclaim um, uh, your strength and your victory. Um, kind of like, you know, in the, in the gymnasiums, when there is a team that is, uh, has many, many awards, they put the banners up. Uh, you know, this year we won first place. Um, this person got via, uh, MVP. Things like, so this is the proclamation of how great we are. Um, and the cities used to do this, who were victorious, um, maybe not, not to, to praise themselves, but also kind of to announce to the enemies, don't come close, this is who we are. Um, so we have, thanks be to God, we have victory through our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, as St. John says. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, here, he says many times, turn away your eyes from me, for they have overcome me. These are the eyes of love that are very powerful and sometimes overwhelming. And sometimes maybe um, it, it overwhelms God of his love for us. Kind of like, you know, when um, next week we celebrate Lazarus, right? Um, the Lord saw the place that Lazarus um, was, was buried. It overwhelmed him to the point of tears, right? So maybe... Like, if, if you think, we sometimes we get to the point of tears in our love for God. But God has the same love, even more love for us. Um, and that knowing that brings us closer to our beloved. Then he, he begins to describe um, her from head to toe. Um, and in the next chapter, it's from toe to head. <laughs> okay? So... Um, 
says, your hair is like a flock of goats going down from Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep which have come up from the washing. Everyone bears twins and none is bar barren among them. Like a piece of pomegranate are your temples behind your veil. So we'll go quickly through this symbolism here. But the hair is the strength, kind of like the Nazarite who would cut off their hair, um, or Samson, the source of strength, right? So, um, and going down from Gilead, like the goats are very crafty at being able to climb the mountains, um, and they move quickly and courageously through difficult places um, to attain the goal, right? So St. Gregory of Nyssa says, this is like the, the righteous, even though there's tribulation and temptation, we navigate through that by the grace of God um, to attain the goal, which is Christ. Um, the teeth, as we've said before, is the for the mature because the babies they need solid they need milk, right? And Saint Paul says you don't need solid milk anymore. You need, uh, sorry, he was rebuking them, saying you can't deal with the meat. You need solid milk because you're immature spiritually. But for the spiritual Christian who is mature, you can digest the truth. Um, you're ready. Um, so the bride has teeth like a flock of sheep, <clears throat> which have come down from the washing. Um, the twins here are, are always uh, reminding us of e two things, either the commandments, uh, sorry, um, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament, which are two in one. They're similar and they all bring, both bring us to Christ in different ways. One is the shadow, one is the light, um, <clears throat> or the two commandments of love, love for God, and love for our neighbor, um, <clears throat> like the two tablets um, that had the first four of uh, our love for God, and the, the next six, which is uh, basically a summary of if we love our neighbor, we won't commit adultery, we won't steal, we won't lie, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> um, so usually when you see twins or two, um, it symbolizes one or the other, either the commandments or the commandment of love or the scripture as a whole, Old and New Testament. <clears throat> Then he continues by saying, there are 60 queens, 80 concubines, and virgins without number. My, my dove, my perfect one, is the only one, the only one of her mother. So here he's praising her, right? The favorite of the one who bore her. The daughters saw her and called her blessed, the queens and concubines, and they praised her. Um, <clears throat> so we won't go too much into the numerology, but, um, you know, three always usually symbolizes the Holy Trinity. Four is the corners of the earth, or the directions north, south, east, west, and five is usually the senses. So 60 is three times four times five. So um, I think it's St. Augustine who says uh, this, when the Holy Trinity reigns over the four corners of the earth, um, and he reigns over all of our senses, and the faith in the Holy Trinity that reigns over every sense of every believer in every place of the world, this is the, the church, the queen. <clears throat> um, and the number 80 is, 8 usually is the symbol of the resurrection on the 8th day, um, which is the first day of the new week, right? If we're in the 6th day now, right? The 7th day, um, sorry, we're in the 6th the day God created man. The 7th day he rested on the cross, right? The 8th day will be the end of this world and the beginning of the next. <clears throat> so 8 times 10, 10 is um, either symbol of perfection or the Ten Commandments, like we were saying, the, the limited life here on earth. Um, <clears throat> so again, another symbol uh, of the church in a different way. So that's why there's 60 queens, 80 concubines, and then virgins without number, meaning um, the believer who offers their whole self to God, all my heart, all my mind, all my feelings, um, as Abuna Tedros explains, um, we, we don't accept any other groom. We don't think of anything else but the Lord um, and, and have any emotions stirred up except for the Lord. Um, and then he says, you are the only one. So there's one holy Catholic apostolic church. If you want to go deeper into that, you can um, look into the, the series that we did on the Holy Creed. Um, at the end of the creed, one of the phrases, we believe in one only holy Catholic and apostolic church. But as St. Paul says, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Um, <clears throat> and as the Lord said, one flock, one church, one shepherd, Christ. 
um, and his prayer in Gethsemane, that they all may be one and perfect in one as we are one, speaking to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> so that's the, the unity. Um, then uh, the question is, who is she who looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners? He's praising her again. Um, Abuna Tetra says this is first explanation can be considered here as Saint Mary. Um, so sometimes the bride is Saint Mary, sometimes the bride is the church, sometimes the bride is the soul, and uh, the church uses these the symbolism interchangeably many in many different ways. So <clears throat> he he says Saint Mary says bride of the morning. She's the mother of the true light, right, and and the mother of the son of righteousness in, in Malachi. Right, um, and and she's beautiful as the moon, um, because the moon gets the beauty from the sun. <laughs> right, she is clear as the sun because the Holy Spirit came upon her, um, and sanctified her and prepared her for the incarnation. Um, awesome as an army with banners. We kind of already explained this, but he says, for she carries inside of her the King and the Lord and the and the commander of the battle um, against sin and against the devil. <clears throat> so when we describe the bride, we find Christ, right? we find the groom. Um, and when we describe the groom, we see what the bride is, is moving or transforming to be like. Um, so this is the beauty of, <clears throat> of the book, of, but also the beauty of the Christian life. <clears throat> so um, His Holiness Pope Chinuda of Blessed Memory talks about the, this phrase, awesome as an army with banners. He says, well, if we're powerful, our power is through the Holy Spirit. He said, you should seek power from the Holy Spirit in prayer, ministry, conduct, humility. Power that overcomes the devils and makes the soul awesome like an army with banners. It is the power of the Holy Spirit, God's power working in us. Um, again, if you want more of this, we did a series on the Holy Spirit. Um, and one of the talks, if I remember correctly, was about this, uh, the power that works in us. Not the worldly power of Goliath, or the power of the body or the flesh, or power of we weapons. Um, with such power you can praise with the psalmist saying, they surrounded me like bees and they were quenched like a fire of thorns, For it, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. The right hand of the Lord does battle. <clears throat> I believe it's Psalm 118. <clears throat> so the true believer is powerful and victorious in fighting against sin. At least we have to be ready to fight the battle um, and valiant. <clears throat> like an army with battle with banners, um, we have this experience. Then uh, says, "I went down to the garden of nuts to see the verdure of the valley, to see whether the vine had budded and the pomegranates had bloomed. Before I was even aware, my soul had made me as the chariots of my noble people." Here's the transformation. Um, <clears throat> we already kind of spoke about the chariots of Pharaoh and the filly among among the chariots. Um, it's in, mentioned in the first chapter. Um, but here, again, uh, Pope Shunida uh, writes, every one of Pharaoh's horses is powerful, trained for war, obedient to the one who rides Christ, runs into war without fear. Like, if, if you had a horse that was not trained, it would not even want to come close to another horse or to uh, a person with a weapon. But the one who is trained, they go straight in because... They, they trust the direction of the one riding, um, <clears throat> plunging amidst the swords of the enemy and conquers. Um, the Lord is the one who goes out to conquer and has conquered and will conquer, as we see in Revelation, <clears throat> the one riding the white horse. Um, <clears throat> so like Pope Shunner said, not just an ordinary horse. We are not just regular people, but we are prepared for the day of battle because we're led to victory by the Lord. Um, and he is controlling us. Well, we allow him, we submit to allow him to control us um, because uh, the bit is in our mouth. Right? His, his hand is controlling not only our mouth, but our whole person. Okay. Um, finally, in the, in the end of this chapter, uh, the, the groom says, Return, return, O Shulamite, which is, as we said before, another name of Solomon. Right? Because she is like him, the, the one who is peaceful, 
right? Um, return, return, that we may look that uh, upon you. What would you see in the Shulamite, as it were, the dance of two, two camps? Um, so the secret of her peace is that she has come and returned to the Lord. So this return is the is the beauty of the repentance, right? Uh, as the Lord says several places, you know, uh, this word return is very powerful. But like in the book of Isaiah, the Lord says, I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions, and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Um, we don't just return and there's no transformation. No, there is forgiveness pure, uh, and the return and the purity. It's only made possible by the Lord. We just have to be willing to let him change us. As he says in Jeremiah, I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people. I will be their God. They shall return to me with their whole heart. So we bring everything to him. This is the idea here of the the, the virgins without number. We bring everything to him. <clears throat> and he changes our whole heart and our whole person to be like him. Thus does the Lord of hosts return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Um, <clears throat> finally, now, again, we see another praise. And we'll just only do a few more uh, verses, the beginning of, of chapter 7. Actually, I'll summarize the first six verses because there's a, a much more symbolism again. Um, but I, you get the idea. <laughs> um, so he starts by saying, how beautiful are your feet and sandals? So he's starting at the bottom. Um, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, oh, daughter of the prince. Why? Because we are children of God. <laughs> right? Um, uh, and then he ends the description from, from toe to head by saying how fair and how pleasant you are, O love, with your delights. Um, so Abuna Tedros writes, he says, he calls her the daughter of a prince, for she is related to him. She is born from water and spirit in, ba in baptism. And as a daughter of the heavenly king, she is called in the psalm, the royal daughter. Um, again, this psalm, Psalm 44, we, we liken or it's one of the praises for St. Mary, but also it's about the, the, the beauty of the soul in relation to Christ. So he continues by saying, the beauty of the bridegroom was reflected in her. Christ, we're not beautiful by ourselves, but by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Um, that's why, remember, he says what her, her eyes are likened to, the eyes of what? Do you remember? A dove. Because he sees himself in us. He sees the Holy Spirit in us. That's what makes us beautiful. Not us. <laughs> uh, we're just dust. Um, <clears throat> so the beauty of the bridegroom is reflected in her since he is living inside of her. She has a special beauty. Um, and when we see that beauty in others, then we f truly feel that there are brothers in Christ and, and we, we don't have to struggle as much to respect them and to love them and to forgive them because we see God in them. Um, <clears throat> so this beauty is filled with delightful fruit, which he asks for and finds inside of her. The fruit's uh, worthy of repentance, but also the fruit of the Spirit. Um, so just to conclude, we say, well, uh, there's a few reasons why um, he starts here at the feet. Um, uh, Abuna Tedra says that the first one is that because he, he wants to realize and to convey that the secret of her beauty and her life is by starting to walk in the right path, the return, right? Um, and her repentance is, is what makes her beautiful because when we return to God, he transforms us and makes us like him and forgives our sins and, and eliminates the, the filth and the ugliness, right? <clears throat> so that's the first reason. The second reason is because it, he wants to give as much honor to, to the less honorable parts of the body. So when she begins to describe how beautiful he is, she starts with the head. Because he is the head. <laughs> but then when he speaks to her, uh, especially the last time, he says, well, you are the body, I am the head. So let me start with beautifying and, and, and praising you. Um, and, and so we, are in, in, we want to be at the feet of Christ. Um, the, the last example is the, the servant, right? Like, you know, when you see in some of the icons, especially of the apostles, um, that there's a ray of light coming from their feet, besides the the halo in the in the around the head. Why? Because the psalmist says in in actually uh, sorry Isaiah says this, and um, Saint Paul in the 
epistle to the Romans also quotes from it. He says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings um, of good things. So the feet are the ones that work to spread the gospel, to bring the beauty of Christ. So we praise the, the feet as well. Um, <clears throat> so that, and, and also to show that, you know, when we sin and whatnot, we need to be washed. Our feet need to be washed first, um, um, which is one reason why, like on Holy Thursday and on the apostles, like the, the Lord started to wash the feet of the disciples um, because this is the part that gets dirty, but also because they are spreading, their feet are working to spread the gospel. <laughs> um, so uh, the goal, though, is for us to be pure and clean and beautiful inside and out from top to bottom without any spot in us. Of course, no one is perfect, but we strive for this perfection, and it happens by the grace of God. Um, may the Lord continue to um, inflame our love and our hearts of, fill of love for, for our bridegroom um, so that he can transform us day after day uh, until we live with him. Glory be to him now and from the age of age. And God willing, like we said, next time we'll try to con conclude uh, before uh, the, the last Friday of Lent so we can focus on the Passion Week. So um, I don't think we're going to necessarily announce when it's uploaded, but God willing, before Friday, we will upload um, the last part so we can focus on the Pascha Week. Um, stand up for prayer, Lord, make us ready. Grace is only begun, Son of the Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, communion, gift, fellowship, the Holy Spirit, and the peace of the Lord.